gentleman from South Carolina, Mr. Gowdy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The gentleman from Texas, Mr. Mr. Gomert, is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, Director, we appreciate your being here. Uh, I was so thrilled when I uh, first got to question Director Comey. I didn't realize what direction that would take. But uh, you are taking an FBI department that was weakened by Mueller's time. And I'm not asking for a comment on that, but I know for his from his five-year upper-out policy, as the Wall Street Journal pointed out, he got rid of thousands and thousands of years of experience. I came to believe because he wanted uh, younger people that were more yes-men. And so he got rid of people that could have advised him against uh, some of the, the poor decisions he made, whether it's squandering millions of dollars on software that didn't work and wouldn't work and people he got rid of knew that. Uh, but all kinds of things. And I came to understand as a young prosecutor who knew the law better than some of the older lawyers that there is something to be gained from experience. And so we lost thousands of years of experience and Comey took over a weakened FBI because of what Mueller did. And Mueller made a lot of mistakes he wouldn't have otherwise. So that was rather sad. Um, but I want to, oh, and I, I'll be glad to have my friend across the aisle know that I am outraged by the government's collusion with Russia. I was outraged. I, was, I didn't think President Bush and our State Department went far enough in uh, condemning the invasion into Georgia uh, by Putin and the Russians, but they did take some strong actions to make, make known their uh, discomfort and they're upset over that. And of course, uh, the response by the Obama administration was to send over a plastic reset button with the wrong Russian word on it. Uh, but they made clear nonetheless that we're not bothered by your invasion of Georgia. You can invade anybody you want. That was the message the Russians took. And I am really outraged at the allowing of Russia to buy our uranium, even though the FBI and the Justice Department had already found out that they were trying to get our uranium illegally with bribes and violating the law, and that has not been addressed. So, yes, I am outraged. But as you're aware, Deputy Director McCabe uh, was involved in highly charged political cases that have been controversial due to his political leanings. So I wanna ask you if you are aware of any other senior FBI executives that are aligned with McCabe's political views. Yes or no, you aware of any other senior FBI executives? I'm not aware of any senior FBI executives who are allowing improper political considerations to affect their work with me right now. Okay, let me ask you this. Um, I'm gonna ask about specific executives, some of whom have been promoted by McCabe within the last few years. So my question to you, Director, is are you aware of any of the following people openly aligning themselves with the political bias expressed by McCabe or openly speaking against this administration. Um, first, Carl Gattis. Yes or no? My experience with uh, Executive Assistant Director Gattis has been very positive, uh, and he's been a complete professional in all my interaction with him. But have you, are you aware of him openly aligning himself with the political bias that McCabe expressed? Well, I, I'm going to quarrel a little bit with the premise of your question about Deputy Director McCabe. All right. But as far as, but as, far as direct, as Executive Assistant Director Gaddis, as I said, he's been a complete professional. And by that, I mean to include Have you heard him open aligning with himself with political bias against the Trump administration? No. Uh, Mike McGarrity. No. Same question, and I'll take McCabe out of it. Are you aware of him openly aligning himself with political bias against the Trump administration? No. Josh Kuehl. No. Larissa Mincer. I actually don't know who that is. Okay. All right. Thank you. Fair enough. Brian Parman. No. All right. Thank you. Um, I know you appointed uh, 
Brian Parman to the New York Field Office Counterterrorism Division, so it is important that we have fair-minded people. And there's never been a requirement that anybody not be able to vote or have political beliefs, just that they not let them affect their out their output. So I would encourage you. Well, I got a lot more to ask, but thank you for your work. Uh, I want to be your best friend as long as you stay on the straight and narrow. Thank you, Director. Thank you, sir. The uh, chair recognizes the gentlewoman from California, Ms. Bass, for five minutes. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Mr. Director, for um, being here with us today. And I also want to thank you for the time that you spent uh, a week or so ago with representatives of the Congressional Black Caucus following up on the black identity extremists. And I would like to ask you questions following up from that meeting. Uh, we raised a number of concerns, one of which uh, the idea that that document was distributed to law enforcement uh, nationwide, and also the concern that the message that that sends to many local law enforcement agencies and how you distinguish between what might be problematic uh, behavior and also what is people just exercising their First Amendment rights. And so one of the questions that we asked you that I wanted to follow up on is if you've learned any more about what criteria, evidence, methodology that was used to even come up with, with that category of black identity extremists. Uh, Congresswoman, um, as I think I may have mentioned uh, in our meeting, the analysis that occurred there involved a, which is our standard practice uh, for one of these products, and we issue them across all of our various program categories, um, is to take both so-called open source information, which is what the intelligence community would call it, right. uh, and our own ongoing investigations, of which there are many, and mesh them to two together with other information and try to make sure that the information that we're speaking on, that those two things align. Um, as to your concerns, and we discussed them, and I hope uh, I found the conversation constructive here yes. in your concerns, and I hope you did too. Um, we take respect for the First Amendment very seriously, uh, and in this context, as in every other domestic terrorism context, we want to be very clear with people uh, and all the American people investigate rhetoric, ideology, opinion, right. uh, no matter how, who might consider it extremist. Uh, what we do investigate is when rhetoric, ideology, opinion takes that next step into the category of federal crime and in particular yes. violence. E exactly. And I did find our, our conversation constructive. There did seem to be several things that I know you were going to follow up on. And so you were clear about the three categories that led that were reasons for investigation. And one of the things that I mentioned to you is the difference, and, and we talked about this, the difference between an investigation and surveillance. So you have the surveillance activity that may or may not lead to an investigation. And so what a number of activists are complaining about around the country is the increase of surveillance, being visited by FBI agents, having FBI agents come to their house, leaving their business cards. And, um, and so that, you know, was a concern. And what was that really based on? So these are activists that are protesting because of community police relations because of uh, killings that might have happened, a variety of reasons. Some of this is, um, it might be the, um, you know, protests that have taken place in Baltimore in several of the cities around the country. And so I want to know if there's any additional information that you have found from that. What is happening in your offices around the country where activists are complaining of this? I have, uh, after our meeting, I did farm out a whole number of follow-up questions to people. Um, I will confess that I've been fairly busy lately and have not yet gotten the results of those, but we will continue to look into those questions. Okay, we really need to do that because let, let me just explain to you that one of the things that all of us would like to take place in our communities is for our communities to cooperate with law enforcement. But at this point in time, to have FBI agents come by people's house after peaceful demonstrations, I know I can't recommend that they speak to the FBI. I have to tell them that they can't speak to the FBI because if you do say something and you innocently say something that might not be true, then that person feels as though they might be entrapped because they could be, um, they could be charged with lying to an FBI agent. 
And so to find the information out as soon as possible, I think, is, is, is really important. I want our community to participate, but we can't participate if it's not really clear where the FBI is coming from. So many organizations have called for the withdrawal of the BIE designation, in particular Noble, which is the National Organization of Black Law Enforcement Executives. And so in light of the public outcry, including from law enforcement, I want to know if part of the follow-up from our meeting is if you are considering retracting that category of black identity extremists and then sending out clarification to law enforcement around the country that that category really doesn't exist. I think what we're doing right now is what we would normally do with any intelligence assessment, which is we continue to evaluate the data as it rolls in. The intelligence assessment in question was a snapshot in time. Uh, and as we get more information that comes in from all quarters, considering all sorts of information, I expect that we will update that information in an appropriate way. And depending on what the information shows, it could be anything from a reaffirmance to a retraction to a clarification. It just depends on what the information shows. But the okay. one thing we will not do is withdraw um, intelligence assessments based on, on public outcry. I'm sure you can understand why that's not an approach that ultimately will, will stand us. Okay, well, I want to continue to be in contact with you for this because I think one of the points that we made to you, and, and I really hope you take it uh, seriously, is the harm that that document is causing. Because what that says, it, it sends a chill to activists around the country. And my big concern is, is that local law enforcement will misinterpret that and will clamp down on people exercising their First Amendment right. Time of the gentlewoman has expired.